How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week 14. We're back on the bye here at 8-3 and three on the season. And uh, so we've got a little bit more recruiting. Uh, but we're going to start off. We got a head coaching update or level up, I should say, and an offensive coordinator level up in the past week. So we're going to try to improve that. I think one of the biggest things that we need to improve is our blocking. Sure, we could improve our running game a little bit or stamina or, you know, Grace McCall's throwing, um, but let's just get better run blocking right now. Now with our head coach update, I think that we're going to go ahead and go with the closer, get that extra 500 points here for the last couple weeks in the season. And that might be enough to allow us to pick up uh, an extra player or something, just giving more points to guys that we care about. A uh, lot of guys that we have big leads with. Let's go down to the bottom, as always, see what's going on. Uh, anybody who's on the board at this point is going to stay on the board. So we'll just go ahead and uh, keep it the way it is and hope that we can pick guys up. Uh, and we'll just kind of now throw points behind people. Um, one player ready for a visit. They might have to come during this bye week because, yeah, we don't have another home game. So Sean Franklin, what is he? Uh, how good is he? Did I just freeze the game? No, we're good. <laughs> 67 overall corner. Not the best. Good speed at 93. A little bit slow with the 83 acceleration of getting to that top speed. But the 80 zone coverage is pretty solid. So hopefully uh, he enjoys his time here. Not a game that he can come and watch. But regardless, he can, you know, come tour the campus. And uh, instead of giving points based on lead, let's just go by overall now. Make sure that we're picking up the best players that we have on the board, which isn't the most of them. Um, and then that's going to be that for the recruiting this week. So we'll sim forward towards our final game of the week and our final week of the regular season. where We will go on the road at Georgia Southern. Now, as we start to sim into this, Appalachian State, I believe, is playing a game here in week 14 and week 15. We need them to lose one of those games, and we need to win our game against Georgia Southern to win the Sun Belt Conference. So we get a fullback committed. Um, unfortunately, Alex Moore, the free safety, is going to Louisiana. I don't know which one they consider Louisiana in this game. If it's like UL Monroe or Louisiana Lafayette, but that's going to happen. Recruiting battles in a lot of places, and JJ Barr, the fullback, commits. Um, so one player to take off and one player uh, that we don't have to worry about now. So we'll go ahead and just quickly finish out our recruiting for this episode. 11 scholarships remaining and they're going fast. So if you're a recruit and you want to come play for us, you better think about uh, signing. Uh, you got to do it sooner than later. Chad Bradshaw will get some points from us. Eugene McNeil will get the rest. Uh, and then Alex Moore's coming off the board. Uh, three guys ready for visits, but there's no visit that we can schedule them for. So unfortunately, Robert Harris, Desmond Douglas, and Cole Lambert are not going to be able to get an official visit. Hopefully that doesn't hurt us too bad on the recruiting. And we can go ahead and see, top class-wise, we have a lot of guys signed. We're at 75th. Eight three-stars, four two-stars, and two one-stars. That's a decent ratio, uh, up to 14 so far, but only 75th in the country. I want to see that. I don't remember what goal I set, but I want to see it top 50. Top 50 is always going to be nice. And, uh, you know, maybe a chance that we jump up there. Scroll up to the top just to see what some of the top teams are doing. Alabama. These dudes are five and seven on the year, and they have five five stars. That's an insane amount. That's like one of the highest numbers I've seen. Texas, Penn State, Ole Miss, Oklahoma, and Florida all have two. And then Virginia, Texas A&M. South Carolina, Pitt, Oregon State, and Oregon. Uh, man, the big spread on five stars. Notre Dame, uh, North Carolina, Nebraska, Mississippi State, Minnesota, goodness, Michigan State. Oh my gosh, Miami and Auburn all have a five star. I'm surprised that uh, the Beavers managed to pick one up. They are the 24th best recruiting class in the country right now. 15 commits, eight three stars, two four stars, and a five star. The Beavers are a 90 overall team, 4-8 and eight on the season. I mean, are they going to become a powerhouse? That's kind of crazy. How about our top 25 polls before we take a look 
at the conference standings for one final time before we go into conference championship week. Where's the losses? Michigan. <laughs> oh, no. Poor Wolverines. They lost again to Ohio State. The undefeated season is over. Uh, it was, you know, a two score game. They fall to 11 and one drop down to sixth in the rankings. Miami, the sole undefeated team now at number one. No doubt about it. Uh, Clemson, number four, took their second loss to a now number two South Carolina. That's a 10 point game. West Virginia loses to number four, Texas. That's their third loss. A lot of decent losses here. Wyoming lost to New Mexico in overtime. Um, North Carolina loses to Duke. That's a weird low-scoring game, 19-7. to Tough one for the Tar Heels. Offense unable to score. And Ole Miss, Georgia, Notre Dame, and Cincinnati all dropping out. Those are some big names. We're 26th. The first on the list of receiving votes team. If we win this, we will be ranked again. All right, so we'll go through some conference standings. Uh, Clemson's locked up the ACC Atlantic. Uh, I think that Miami has locked up the ACC Coastal, so that'll be that conference championship game. The American is going to be between UCF and Cincinnati pending... Uh, the final game of the season. The Big 12, we're going to see... Well, it's going to come down to the wire between Texas and Oklahoma. Um, both tied there. And, and I think Texas might have the tiebreaker there. The Big 10 East is still in Michigan's hands. Should they close out or should... No, it's Michigan's won it. Neither of these teams playing. So uh, they lose to Ohio State, but will still make the conference championship. And I think it's going to be the same story for Nebraska making it there. Conference USA sees Middle Tennessee finish 8-0, undefeated in conference. And they will lead or win the East. Uh, North Texas wins the West. Our independents are 7-5, 7-5, and Army 6-5. Just has a game against Navy to play. In the MAC East, it's going to be Ohio winning their division and uh it looks like toledo just barely beating out central michigan for the mac west in the mountain division of the mountain west conference wyoming has won it and hawaii has won the west the pac-12 north is going to be washington winning it same record as oregon but they won the head-to-head -head, so they get the tiebreaker over the ducks and in the South, Arizona State will lock it up. So it's going to be Huskies, Sun Devils in the Pac-12. The SEC East is all South Carolinas. They've been pretty solid all year long. 11-1, number two in the country. And number 12, Auburn will win the West. This is a team, remember, that uh, we beat by a point in the third week of the season. And now we're at our conference, the Sun Belt. Uh, Texas State. Now in the lead, Appalachian State drops down because, well, they did lose again to Georgia State. But Texas State managed to win. They beat Louisiana Monroe, who was 0-11. They were certain to win it. And now for us to win the conference championship because they did beat us, Texas State did, and they have the tiebreaker over us right now. Now for us to win the conference we need, who was it? Arkansas State, the Red Wolves, 4-7, and 3-5 and five in conference to beat the Bobcats of Texas State. So, uh, Destiny really not in our own hands here. Uh, let's see, 79 overall for Arkansas State. Texas State's a 75 overall. There's a chance there. We just need to get our job done and, and I guess hope for the best. And I think it's time to get into this one. This is, I believe, a rivalry game for us. So, big one. Uh, they're not a great team. Four and seven, a C overall. We know that my user drops us down to a C overall, though. So, relatively even match. Corso is going to be in our corner. And statistically, we lead a lot of spots. Apparently, even after the four interception game, we're even on the season on turnover differential. That doesn't seem right to me, but I guess maybe I've had... A couple of games where we didn't give up the ball and maybe we took it so uh that's that's i think an improvement now georgia southern not the easiest season you can see a lot of losses um they also lost to texas state 
Uh, they beat Appalachian State, though, 38-14, so uh, we just need to hope that we can play well here. As we come in, there it is, 81 overall to their 75 with an 83-74 split on offense and a perfectly even 80-80 overall defense. Um, both of our teams here have updated jerseys, so we're going to go ahead and can we wear maybe the black helmet? That's a look that we haven't seen from us yet, uh, but we'll wear that as we are on the road. And Georgia Southern, you know, their default helmet's the Navy. Do they have any alternates? No, but they do have the cool white helmet. Uh, and I gotta be honest, I think the white helmet is a million times better. Those wings are pretty cool. So this is the fit that they're gonna be wearing. The fate of our season hangs in the balance of this game and the Texas State, Arkansas State game. So let's hope that we can do well. Offensively, one of the worst in the country, although they've been running the ball well. Uh, and defensively, they are very solid. Uh, whereas offensively, we just can't really do anything. Except we do score a decent amount of points somehow. Uh, thanks to our special teams, mostly. And our defense is just middle of the road, but uh, definitely worse than theirs. They are top players hitting that 90 overall mark and then dropping down into the mid to high 80s. So that, I think, benefits us as Javon Hiley at this point is a 91 overall. Decent season for him. Only four touchdowns for the man. And of course, our kicker is pretty impressive. And this will help us. Two injuries. Matt LaRoche, the running back with a pole hamstring, is out for this week. And uh, Langermeyer, the center, dislocated elbow. He'll be gone for the next five. So two pretty big positions for their offense gone for this game. So here we are on the road for the final time this season. The rivalry game. But us being on the road means we get to choose, and tails never fails, so we'll win the toss, and we will elect to kick this one off. Biscardi should be putting this one in a spot that is returnable. We'll see if they bring it out of the end zone. I don't know uh, how this game's going to go. Seeing as this Georgia Southern team is one that has run the ball a lot this season and has done it pretty well, we're going to be trying to defend the run. We'll be in the 4-3 pretty much the entire game, and stuff like that certainly can't happen. Spill them. Oh my gosh, I missed the tackle. Are they going to score on the first play? Shelton thankfully chases this slow running back in Jalen White down, but we gave up 52 yards on the opening play. That's <laughs> more than disappointing. Well, it's nice to see that another game and the uh user continues to be suspect thankfully gunter gets there and stops the run and uh they come out second 11 throw the screen and there's a stiff arm and a tackle in the third down and hopefully the audio is better now i just realized that uh windows screwed up my settings so i was uh just now able to hopefully correct that and the rest of our game shouldn't be as bad third and three and bringing the blitz. We'll see if we can stop the run. It's going to be an option. Mats needs to get out there. Perfect block from, I think, the tight end there. And it gives him the first down. Looking again for another blitz. I'm expecting them to run this ball all game long. Um, and wow, even with how slow their running back has been. And the fullback takes it in that time. He was slow. We just can't get there. So we gave up a touchdown. And that is not going to fly. A quick 7-0. You know, the Texas State game won't matter if we lose. Diggs will bring this out to return it. And the blocking, not quite good enough, but oh my gosh, he almost broke free. Still a decent return past the 30. We threw, what, four interceptions last game? Uh, let's try not to repeat that as we'll open this drive off with a run. And Reese is going to just get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10. We're going to step back to pass here. Get the quick throw off to bed good just to get the positive five yards. And now we will look to throw again here on third down. Just trying to... Never mind, I'm going to scramble. Does McCaw have the speed? He does. Grayson gets across midfield. Steps out of bounds after picking up 18 yards. See if we can keep this one on the ground here on this first down. The run to Reese waiting for the blocks. Does a little juke. Kind of messed up the lineman, and we got nine there. A read option on second and one. McCall will keep it, trying to pick up the blocks. He does. 
And I shouldn't have taken that hit, but I was greedy for the yards. We still got 12, though. We've been throwing a lot of these screens this year. It's time for the bubble to Tyson Mobley. The blocking is decent, and Tyson managed to pick up nine and a half, almost the full 10. Hopefully this opens us up for a little end around to Javon Hiley. Try to give the wide receiver the running game, and uh, hey, he gave us five yards there. So that worked very well. And on this first and 10, we'll step back to pass. And we've got the running back over the middle. Oh, I thought about diving for the end zone. I'm glad I didn't because he got it anyways. We tie this game up with 2.03 left in the first quarter. All right, it's time for the defense to do something. We know that this is going to be a lot of running. It's an option on this first down. Spillum gets the tackle just two yards past the line of scrimmage, though. And again, they come out in this formation. It's going to be another run, another option, and Shelton needs to get there. Another tackle. They actually lost a little bit of yardage, and it's now third and nine. So the big play for me to worry about here is going to be the screen. And it is going to be a slip screen. I don't know if I can get there with Gunter. The blocking was too good. And they get the first down, stepping out of bounds after 11 yards. It always hurts when you know exactly what play is coming, and then you can't quite stop it. Thankfully, we're able to cover off the running back and force the quarterback to keep it for a loss of two on that first down. Expecting a pass on second and 12 now, though. Uh, it's going to be a handoff. Up the middle, first down and a lot of room to go. Oh my gosh, these missed tackles are going to kill us. Shelton's not going to catch him, and it's another big touchdown. 131 rushing yards already given up here in the first quarter. Oh, why does it? I hate this. It's a new game, and there's a new thing that we're going to completely suck at for the entire uh, episode. I'm going to bring this out with Diggs. Hopefully this doesn't turn into a high-scoring affair, because I don't think that benefits us. But Diggs, crossing midfield, I don't think he's going to have the speed to outrun this man, but he gets us across the 30-yard line on the 76-yard kick return. I think if he fields that one at the goal line instead of five yards deep, that's a touchdown. They're going to be pressed up, so we're going to try the play action. Looks like they're bringing pressure, trying to get this one away. We find Isaiah Likely inside the 15-yard line. That'll give us a great first down at the 12-yard line. And for the final play of the first quarter, we're just going to run it up the middle to Reese White, who falls forward for four yards. So end of the quarter, we're technically down, but it looks like we are right on the verge of scoring. We just got to hold on to the football. And I'm sure that now that I've mentioned the possibility of a turnover, uh, we're going to have a fumble. <laughs> it seems to be how it works. The blocking, great for Reese White, but unable to get enough for the first down of the touchdown. Puts us in a third and two. They're going to be expecting the run. We'll see if we can hit them with it anyways. The counter trying to get to that shorter side of the field. We just got enough for the first and goal. And Reese with his 20th yard of the day. Let's keep the wheels turning on this ground game. Handing it off again to Reese. The blocking is perfect, and he gets in untouched to tie this ball game up. Biscardi's kicking another one away here. And uh, our game apparently is pretty early in the morning. I can see every once in a while on the ticker. Ooh, great stop there. But I can see on the, the ticker down below the matchup that we're waiting to see in Texas State in South Alabama or Arkansas State or whoever it is. And uh, their game doesn't start till 1 Eastern. And it hasn't started yet, so we'll be in suspense on that one for a while. Second and seven will come out ready to stop this as, never mind, I got beat over the middle. Uh, and so did the man who was guarding him. And we're going to take a gamble on this first down. I'm expecting the run. We're going engage eight. We'll just try to avoid the run up the middle, and it is a handoff. He kind of cuts it out towards the edge and broke a tackle. Still got seven yards. This fullback is doing some work. I'm going to keep blitzing, but I'm not sure there's enough that I can do. Uh, another fullback handoff, and this time we hit him at the line of scrimmage. So third and three. Really going to hope that we can stop this one. They're going to go with the draw. We brought the safety blitz, and we get there for it. Defense holds. It's fourth and six, and they're going to be forced to punt this one away. Aaron back there has already done a pretty solid job returning the ball on this game. See if we can continue that as the blocking doesn't do a great amount. Only gets 10 yards on the punt return. Midway through the second quarter here, we have our first chance 
to take the lead as we'll start this drive with a quick pass to Tyson Mobley for five yards. Try a counter to Reese on this one and he's going to be caught up from behind and lose a yard as we just ran into the lineman. And on third and five here, I'm honest, I'm kind of looking a little bit deep on this play. Or maybe over the middle. No, Tyson Mobley. Oh my gosh, he did hold on to it for a second, but the contact broke it up and we're just going to pump the ball right back to him. Kind of hoping that we can get a decent rundown on the return man here. Good hang time from the punt from Biscardi, but well, we still give up a decent return. So absolutely nothing doing to stop the... Uh, or to gain the lead. Gosh, I just lost my train of thought because we actually had a good play there. But uh, yeah, couldn't do it on offense. Now the defense has to stop him again. We can be pretty sure that this will be a uh, draw. Yeah, it seems like they almost always are running on first and second down. But now that it's third and 16, if this is on pass, I will be very surprised. Third and 16. See what we can do here to stop this pass. Maybe it's going to be a screen. I'm not sure. They're burning clock, actually, just to uh, make this order go by a little bit quicker. It is another slip screen, and we're going to be there with Gunter this time. So we'll take the timeout now, and it's 4th and 19. Hopefully with a minute and 25 and two timeouts, we can come out and at least get a field goal. We get the ball to start the third quarter, so I just want this first uh, half to be us with the lead. Or at the very least, tied wouldn't be the end of the world either. Diggs broke a tackle just before midfield. Uh, got brought down just after that, though. We'll need to be passing a lot on this drive, which is ultimately very dangerous for us. I see a circle over the middle of the field. I don't think I could get the ball there, although we find Javon Hiley. He was able to adjust to the throw. We got 22 yards just like that. So that's pretty fantastic. Uh, didn't mean to get that throw to be that successful outside the pocket. I'm looking for Javon again. And he almost had the route jumped. So we've got a second and two. And uh, we're going to look towards the end zone. Tossin went up. Bed good. Wow. Uh, that route didn't work how I was expecting it. Well, we've got a third and 10 with 57 seconds. Just about in field goal range where we'll step back and try to find something. Highly in the end zone. Dropped it. Oh, he couldn't hold on. It's fourth and 10. Thankfully, we have a kicker that can easily make a 50 yarder. But how long does he have to hold the ball for that to be a catch? I guess we should be thankful it wasn't a fumble. So close to a touchdown, but we come away with three points. Only 46 seconds left in this half. Biscardi's going to hopefully put this one in a spot where we can get the stop again. And I'm not too uh, confident that the defense will be able to do this. We know that they're going to be passing. Or at least we assume that they will. What can we do to stop it though? Quarterback scrambling. We actually reacted quickly and only gave up two yards there. So we can probably expect them to throw again unless they decide to wave the white flag on the half. And, man, are they just going to burn this clock out? Seems like a waste of time when you had all three of your timeouts and almost a minute to work with. But for a running focus team, maybe we shouldn't be too surprised. Uh, is this going to be a Hail Mary? No. They step back to pass. The man's open. Clock hits triple zeros, though, so the play was pretty much worthless. And we can go into the locker rooms uh, feeling okay. You know, we're in the lead. We get the ball to hopefully extend it to open up the third quarter. Um, we know that we just have to stop the run, and it seems like maybe we can make that adjustment. Uh, and if we take care of the football, I think that we can win this. So we'll come out hopefully feeling fired up to start this second half. Diggs. Looking to return it, and the blocking is actually pretty solid. Diggs is going to be in a foot race again. I don't think he has the speed. We'll dive for it just to get that couple extra, and we're inside the 25. A great way to start this drive. Uh, I kind of want to look to the end zone with Fountain. Maybe we can do something like that and see if we can get him in the one-on-one. -on -one. The safety is going to stick with him, though. No, the safety actually went... 
away. Uh, we'll just scramble with McCall, and he breaks a tackle, but steps out of bounds at the five. That play, I don't know. I, I uh, It worked. Uh, <laughs> I would have rather thrown it, but I guess I'm glad I didn't because it probably would have been picked off. So we'll bring Stramari Jones out into the formation. I don't feel super confident about this one. Uh, but we will run it up the middle. Pull Malden into the center for a little bit of extra blocking up the middle as well. And Reese White can just kind of fall forward for a yard. Maybe a little bit less than that. I'm just going to continue to run it like this as we'll bring Tyson Mobley now for a little bit of blocking at the middle. And the blocking was solid for Reese, but it fell apart quickly. And they're going to say that he didn't even gain a yard. So it's third and goal from the two. But we're going to bring out Grayson for the QB sneak. I'm thinking maybe we can get a big push and a jump over the line into the end zone. Grayson gets the jump and flips into the end zone. There's the touchdown. It works. We'll extend our lead to 10 points here on the opening drive of the third quarter. So that's uh, a decent way to start the drive. It's always useful when Diggs puts us in a spot where we don't really have to worry about field position, but this is a really dangerous return. Man, the blocking was solid. Najee Thompson picked up 31 yards. So these guys are going to have great field position to start the drive at the 34-yard line. They will hand it off. We forced him up the middle, but he made a good cut and was able to stumble his way forward for a couple of extra yards. We're bringing a lot of blitzes. It's just maybe not enough on every play as this will be a screen. And I accidentally hit the blocker. Uh, instead of the man that caught the ball, so they pick it up. This quarterback is perfect. 6-6 six six through the air. He'll step back to throw again, and he's got another one. 7-7 seven seven now for this quarterback. Well, let's just keep bringing the pressure. We know that they're going to run. We just got to get him in a little bit of a hole uh, on second down, and that usually works. Gunter, oh, thankfully saved that. That could have been a touchdown. Absolutely expecting them to run the ball on this one. It's going to be a handoff up the middle. A lot of room to work with. Sidney McRae had his tackle broken. And Logan Wright broke a second before brought being, being brought down for 13. And this is kind of a demoralizing drive. We'll see if we can get them beat now as this is going to be another handoff up the middle. We forced him to cut it to the right and we held him to three. And at this point in the game, only giving up three yards feels pretty uh, decent to us. Man in motion, expecting this. If it's going to be a run, it's going to be a run to the right. Instead, it's men open all over the field. The quarterback just missed. I'm pretty sure he had guys open, but missed his target, and it's third and seven. That's only this quarterback's first incompletion of the day, and on third and seven, he's going to hand it off. There's a lot of room. Spill him. Got to him. It's fourth and inches. Oh, decent tackle. I imagine they go for this, though. And I imagined wrong. Uh, fourth and inches. They're going to try to kick the field goal and make it a seven-point game. Which means they're putting a lot of faith in their defense, who hasn't been the best all game long. Uh, and it's going to be 24-17. So this one's getting a little bit late. Two minutes left in the third quarter. Diggs with another chance to return. He's been deadly all game long. And you got to imagine if we score on this, it might be over. Diggs, again, starting to break free. Makes a nice little cut to get a couple of extra yards. And we're back near midfield to start a drive. This is working very well, and once again, we just need to make sure that we don't lose possession of the football, because that seems to be a pretty big drive killer for us. Reese, oh my gosh, got a good four, but got absolutely pummeled by the cornerback coming in there. Time for us to throw another screen. They're bringing some pressure off that side of the field, and man, if the blocking would have been just a little bit better, Javon Hiley would have had a lot of room to work with, but we only get a yard out of the play. So three of five on the day, third down conversions. This is technically a play action. We'll see if we can uh, trick the defense on this one. It's just like a quarterback blast, and we'll try to throw it to Bedgood, who comes down with it. Oh, my gosh, at the 25-yard line, that was a dangerous throw, but if anybody's going to come down with it on this team, it is Bedgood. Grayson McCall throwing at about 75% on the game is going to hand this one off on the option, and Reese can... Pick up a couple of yards on the ground. We're going to go back to the bubble screen again here. And uh-oh. Ooh, I threw a risky one there. <laughs> I saw the linebacker running over. I thought maybe I could beat him. Uh, I was wrong. So here we've got another third down. Their coverage has been pretty solid all game long. Uh, but we almost had Isaiah Likely. I just, you know, got ball hawked there and... <laughs> 
Yeah, I said that we needed to hold on to the ball. We did not do that. First turnover of the game goes to Georgia Southern. And uh, defense needs to make another stop. We're going to bring a big blitz to start the drive. Because I want uh, a little bit of momentum heading into the fourth quarter. Spillum brings it down for a loss of a yard. And that will be the end of the third quarter. So as we head into the fourth, we have a seven-point lead. This is a must-win game. It's a rivalry, win, uh, a rivalry game. And then we also need... Texas State to lose as well, but we just got to get the job done here. We'll try to see what we can do. Second 11, I'm kind of expecting a pass, which is against the norm for this game. And the quarterback gets swarmed and sacked. Justin Tomlin will lose five yards, and it's third and long. These guys are only two of five on their third down conversions, and this is exactly where we want them, forcing them where I'm pretty sure they're a little bit more uncomfortable, and Tomlin just missed his man the second time today, and we get the stop. So the punter will be midway into his own end zone, getting rid of this ball, which means that almost no matter what, we should have decent field position to start this drive as Diggs will field it at midfield. Oh, this could be really good. Doesn't need a great return, but oh, just didn't quite get the block we needed to get to the edge. Still starting in plus territory. I don't learn my lessons, so we'll come out and start this drive with a play action. Um, and nobody's really open, so let's just get a couple of yards and step out of bounds. No, we just got back to the line of scrimmage. Well, that's not super useful. Second and 10, we'll try the misdirection. Uh, never mind. We're going to throw this one deep. If they're going to bring a safety blitz, we're going to try to beat them. Let's keep McFarlane as a blocker and see if three routes is enough to find somebody open. And maybe Javon Hiley comes down with it and is inside the five. Not going to lie, that was a little bit of decent user for me to get him into the right position to catch that. But then he comes down with it on his own, holds onto it through whatever contact is there and gets us that first and goal. So no matter what, on, on this little bit of drive, we are just going to start running the ball and burning some clock. Uh, it's in their best interest almost to let us score because I'll just kick the field goal on fourth down. In the meantime, though, as we'll go quarterback blast, put five wide, see if Grayson can do it. Uh, we're going to be burning clock. And Grayson got a little bit more ever so close. Two yards needed on this third and goal. We're going to hand it off to Reese. And see if it's enough. Bringing Malden in to the middle. And no, linebacker gets through. So we get stopped at the line of scrimmage. And we're just going to kick this field goal to increase the lead to two scores. This one should be a chip shot for Biscardi. And it is right down the middle. Less than three minutes to play. We have a 10-point lead. The day that we manage to score more than 60 points, I'm going to be very surprised is again... I'm putting this in a spot where they are forced to return. It's worked both well and poorly for us in this game. That one was pretty bad. Trips to the right. Can we expect a screen? No. But the quarterback does have a man on an out route for five yards. And with so little time to go here and uh, a two-score game. I got to imagine we're not going to see a whole lot of running, but we will probably see some more screens. Paul does a good job bringing him down, and we have a third and five. So let's just make sure that we're kind of paying a little bit of attention to this quarterback, but we know that they're going to be passing. It's another screen. Porter needs to bring him down, and he stands him up enough to get him out of bounds. Fourth and six. They might have to go for this. It's the offense staying on the field, as I'm expecting... Maybe a pass to that left. It's a screen, and it was dropped on the pick from Jordan Strong, but it's a turnover on downs anyways. Really just lost the chance at getting him a pick six, but uh, I think that might be ball game. We start this drive inside the 35, and they have all three of their timeouts, but with two minutes left, they can probably take them, and uh, we kick a field goal, and we win. In fact, we don't even need to kick a field goal because I doubt that they're going to score and then get the ball back and then have time to get a field goal. So we might just run this on fourth down no matter what. A nice little spin move might have done enough. One timeout left for Georgia Southern. And a yard is all that we need to get that final first down and seal the deal. Let's go ahead and bring Reese White up the middle. There's the first down. The offensive line doing a good enough job. And that's going to be game. 
Wouldn't mind scoring another touchdown to make the people who didn't get up in time to watch this game think that we were a little bit better. Uh, but losing two yards uh, usually doesn't bode well for, for something like that. Here's where I screw the game up. The speed option. <laughs> Second and 12. Risk it with the pitch. Nah, I was never planning on pitching it. Just a chance for Grayson to get a couple yards. And for us to bring this game clock below 40 seconds. So, barring a, a turnover, obviously. That should be all she wrote. Likely picking up the block that we needed. Reese getting up the middle. And fourth and inches. 30 seconds on the clock. That's going to be game. We'll come out here in the victory formation, but it won't matter. The clock will hit zero before we can get to the line. We hold on to win another one. I want to start winning these by more, but two scores isn't bad for us. 27 to 17, we beat our rivals in Georgia Southern, and it puts us in a position to win the conference. If Arkansas State wins their game against Texas State, we will be conference champions, but uh, it's out of our hands now. So... A low-scoring second half after a pretty, you know, for us, relatively high-scoring first half is enough. Uh, we outscored them in both to hold on to the lead. They outrushed us, which we expected. We did a decent job passing the ball for how quickly that game went. And uh, we did throw a pick, so we finished the regular season minus one on the tur turnover differential. But we finished the regular season also 9-3, and three, so we should be going to a decent bowl game and hopefully we can get to double-digit wins here. Grayson McCall ends up 10 of 15 for 132 yards, carried it for another 56 and scored two touchdowns. Also threw a pick though, so not the biggest game for him. Meanwhile, Sidney McRae took tackles for loss, including a sack. Uh, you know, we had a dropped pick six probably a couple times, uh, but hey, defense held when it mattered. So we will go ahead and sim through to the conference championship week. Are we going to win our conference? Or did Texas State hold on? Our recruiting news shows that we are just in battles with a bunch of schools. But it is good that we're still in a battle with Brian Davis because 76 overall at defensive tackle. He might get every single one of our postseason recruiting points. Oh my gosh. We didn't have to go to ESPN to find out. We have won the Sun Belt in year two. Oh my gosh. Arkansas State has done it, and I think I might be the biggest Red Wolves fan right now. They could not have come in at a more clutch time for us. That's big. Not only that, but we do get ranked again. Number 25. Uh, we don't have a conference championship game to play, unfortunately, but we can see who's going to be playing in theirs, and we'll probably see a lot of spoilers in terms of that uh, as we scroll through this top 25. I just want to see who took losses in that week 14. Not a whole lot of teams played, uh, but nobody currently in the top 25. UCS drops out, so I guess they were the one team to lose and the reason that we get ranked. But everybody else was just able to rest up for these conference championship games. Instead of looking at conference standings, we'll just go to scores and schedules because that'll work just as fine. Uh, there'll be a couple of conferences that we don't see, but the MAC will be between Toledo and Ohio. The CUSA is going to be between North Texas and Middle Tennessee State. Auburn and South Carolina will be representing the SEC in that championship game. South Carolina at number two hoping to hold on to a spot in the national championship. In the Mountain West, we have Hawaii and Wyoming, a pretty uh, good-looking matchup there. 15, Hawaii is 11-1, and, and Wyoming at number 19 is 10-2 and two on the season. ACC sees number one undefeated Miami playing against number eight, 10-2 and two Clemson. Washington and Arizona State will be facing off in the Pac-12. And in the Big Ten Championship game, it'll be Michigan, who suffered the disappointing loss to Ohio State and dropped down to number six, uh, facing Nebraska. The Cornhuskers only eight and four. So that's interesting. And then we have a couple of conferences that we can look at that don't play their uh, championship games. I think for us, that might be the American, which goes, it looks like, to Cincinnati. The Bearcats at eight and four. Just edge out UCF, who I think must have just lost their final game of the season. 
Yeah, they did lose to Cincinnati. So a de facto conference championship game for the American. In the Big 12, Texas holds on to have the tiebreaker over Oklahoma. We can see that they won their 35-28 in overtime, their third game of the season. Our independents, all three finishing 7-5. and five. That's kind of interesting. Uh, you don't see that every day. And I think every other conference besides us played a conference championship game that we didn't point on. But there it is for us. Nine and three, seven and two in conference. How lucky are we? Appalachian State lost three in a row, uh, ending with a loss against South Alabama. And they got beat bad 34-14. Uh, but how about Texas State? What happened in their game? They lose by 10 to Arkansas State, 48-38. Oh my gosh, we got so lucky in those last two weeks with just everything going our way in terms of the teams that we needed to lose losing. And so we sit atop the conference. Definitely didn't think that that was going to happen. Seven and two conference record works pretty well for us. And hey, at the end of the day, more points for than points against by a decent margin. We'll take that as well. We'll just check our bull projection as the last thing, uh, last week I didn't show you guys, but it did drop down again to, what is it, the Lending Tree Bowl against Northern Illinois. But us winning the conference puts us back into the uh, RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl against a, what is it, a CUSA winning Middle Tennessee State at 10-2. and two. This is going to be a decent matchup. They're ranked 21st in the country, and uh, this is our chance to get to 10 wins on the season. They're a C-plus team, which, again, with my user, it brings us down to a C. So, technically, we're going to assume that they have the edge. Uh, uh, they're worse at turning the ball over, though. However, they have a, a much better offense than we do. That's going to do it for this episode, though. We'll look through uh, some other bowl stuff. We'll go through awards finalists and Heisman stuff. Uh, and, of course, the rest of conference championship week, as well as our bowl game in the next episode. But that's going to do it for today. So as we end this one, I want to say thank you guys for watching. Um, and then thank you guys who tuned into our first uh, live stream on YouTube, which we started a new dynasty. If you missed that, there should be a VOD. It was uh, uploaded. You could see that as well. I'm curious to see how that dynasty goes. And if we're not streaming here on YouTube, it'll most likely be because we're streaming something that isn't NCAA focused. And that will be streamed over at our Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. You can also follow us on Twitter and join our community Discord. Of course, those links are in the description as well as a link for the college football revamp mod so that you can get it for yourself. But thank you guys again. Uh, please feel free to subscribe because it helps a ton and you guys have been incredible with that recently but we're still at like 85% of the people who watch these videos not being subscribed so I'd like to see that number inch a little bit closer to 50 regardless that's gonna do it for us today thank you guys so much for watching my name is Goonmaster you guys are the Teal Boys and wherever you are have a good night or have a good morning and we'll see you later adios <laughs>